Hallelujah. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. Yes. Glory, glory, glory. Is everybody blessed? Highly flavored and favored, anointed, appointed, and ready to battle. That's what it's about, amen? There's no victory without a battle. <laughs> you know, the Word tells us many things. It's pretty wild, isn't it? In fact, it tells us everything. <laughs> One of the things it says, obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Now, there's a special word in the word, obedience. It's called die. D-I-E, the most powerful word besides Jesus. Die. Obedience, the major word in obedience is die. Why? Because you can't, if you don't die, you ain't obeying. You know, we have a saying in this ministry, it's a good day to die. Amen? So everyone say, good day to die. That's the name of the teaching. <laughs> so you're not here by mistake. <laughs> Second Corinthians 5. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Better lock the door. <laughs> we have a bouncer at the door so nobody can get out. <laughs> See, there he is there. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. You know, we are, in, again, you will always, you, know, you hear me repeat so many times, we are in such a trying time. Perilous times. Amen. You can sense in the atmosphere irritation. You can sense in the atmosphere pressure. The enemy is attacking in every area and every way. And he's tricking people. He's laying traps. The word says that he lays traps for all believers. One of the things he tries to do is get us to sow in the flesh. That call, so that means that when a person reacts, they sow in the flesh. And then they reap corruption instead of responding. Amen? That's his job. If he can do that, then he snags us. And so many times people don't realize that they're reacting when they think they're actually responding. Let me share something with you vitally important, and we're going to talk about this. Anything that's not backed by the word that you're doing is called reacting. If it's not backed by this, you're reacting. If it's backed by this, you're responding. Does everybody get it? And when you react, you reap. Some people wonder why they'll never get out of that cycle, because they're still reacting. They're still reaping. Why? Because they're not saying what this says. Amen? This is the word of life. It's the word of life. It is the manual to get home. Amen? These words in here were recorded for me and you. The word will not return void. But it, now, now, don't get me wrong. The word says that the letter kills and the spirit brings life. Why does the letter kill? Because it's not being used. And if you're not obeying this letter, it's going to kill you. Has everybody got it? But the spirit brings life. So you and I are in a ministry of the spirit. Everybody's in the ministry of the spirit. The body of Christ is in the ministry of the spirit. It means breath. So instead of spewing, and we need to release life. This is the difference. See, the enemy's trying to get everyone to spew. Get everyone in an emotional state. Deceive as many people as he can. The word says a house divided cannot stand. 
Does everybody get it? So what the enemy tries to do is get people to begin to chase emotion, chase goosebumps, looking for a false fulfillment. Most people are chasing emotion, goosebumps, or the opposite sex. They're looking for a fulfillment. Does everybody understand? They're looking for something that's going to fulfill them because the enemy's convinced them that God can't fulfill them. Does everybody understand that? And we're, we've talked about this more and more, but I'm seeing more and more all over the world. I'm seeing more and more people fall. We are in the time of falling away. And people are falling away and don't even realize they're falling away. The devil doesn't come up to you and say, hey, today you're going to fall away. No, he's a serpent. It means he likes to charm you. He charms you from behind you, not in front of you. It's that easy. See, so many people think that the devil is just a roaring lion, but he can come in multiple ways. He can come and just whisper to you, Hi, do you remember? You're fearful. He, he begins to release things. You're angry. Sometimes you're hungry. <laughs> when you're really not hungry. Hello? Come on, how many times have you eaten when you're not even hungry? Stinking flesh. Glory. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1. <laughs> because we're in the ministry of the Spirit, one of the things God wants us to do is speak life, not death. Amen? Listen. And because we're in the ministry, that means wherever you go, you get an opportunity to speak life and bring people into the presence of God. But we want to not only bring people in the presence of God, we want to disciple them. Jesus commanded disciple. Amen? Disciple. That's to raise up people. Amen? To disciple. So everything you and I are learning here, and wherever we go to learn something, we should be able to release it. If you're not able to release it, you're not learning it. And that's where the word says, many people learning, 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 but never come to the knowledge of the truth because they're not using what they've learned. Is everybody okay? See, that's where the enemy wants to get us all the time. But remember, we're not fighting flesh and blood. We're fighting powers of darkness. We're not fighting each other, but the enemy wants to get you to fight each other. Look at all the wars that are going on. People murdering one another out there. Wars that are killing. They're, they're building nuclear weapons to destroy one another. That ain't God. That's the devil. We spend more money on military, and don't get me wrong, because other countries have military. So I believe the, the, they're the looking, whoever has the highest pile of nuclear weapons is the one that can supposedly win, but nobody wins. Only Jesus. And he's already won. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1, let's go there. Are we there yet? Let's speak it. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal where? In heaven. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent grown being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well, pleased, rather to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. Now, that should be every believer's desire. See, if you're still fighting for your life, then you're not desiring to be in the presence of God. That should be every believer's desire. No matter what you're going through, 
what's the worst thing that can happen to you? I can go home. I mean, what's, you know, I can go home. Where I'm be with my father. Glory. Is everybody okay? That door's still locked? Good. Hallelujah. Therefore, in verse 9, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be what? Well-pleasing to God, to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or evil. Now listen, if it's not backed by the word, it's evil. Does everybody get it? If it's not backed by the word, it's evil. Glory. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord would persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your consciences. Paul desired to be with the Lord <laughs> as a spirit-filled believer. Again, our attitude of thought should always be desire to be with the Lord. Then you don't fear. Why? Because you're carrying his perfect love. Perfect love casts out all fear. In Romans 8. Good day to die. <laughs> Heck, I'd have thought we'd had a teaching on this by now. I guess we have. It's just been never been labeled enough. Heck, I thought we'd have part one, part two, and part three already. It's a good day to die. <laughs> Tell somebody out there that's all freaked out. You know, when people get frustrated, when people get frustrated and they're all emotional and whatever, you know what's the problem? They can't hear God. When you're emotionally messed up, you can't hear God. When you're angry, you can't hear God. I'm not, does everybody understand it? When you're frustrated, you cannot hear God. In fact, he knows it. And he says, all right, I'm waiting for him to shut up. Emotionally shut up. Mentally shut up. Then you can hear. And when you hear what he has to say and you obey, things are awesome. But if you can't hear them, you can't advance. And people are stuck in routes because they're still stuck in themselves. And they can't move out and advance. See, God knows our heart's desire, even though we think we do, but we really don't. Because you have a desire, and behind your desire is the true desire. And God knows it and sees it. And one of the things he's looking for is our heart, totally sold out, not partial, totally sold out. That's why we're going through this 90-day process of refining. Welcome to the fire. Glory. Romans 8.18. That's speaking. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be what? Is anybody there? Snap. <laughs> Let's start again. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The sufferings of the what? Present time. Are you going through stuff? Everybody's going through stuff. There's a person that's not going through, but you're going to go through. Now, you may recycle if you keep sowing in the flesh, amen, reacting instead of responding. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Now, that's amazing to me. The whole creation is waiting for me and you to stop getting so fleshly, carnal, and, and stop being a human. Does everybody get that? Human precepts, human traditions. Quit acting like you're a human. You're an eternal being, though. 
We're no longer part of the natural state. We're above it. That's what's called supernatural. We're above the world standard, not in pride or arrogance, but above the influence of the world. Amen? Hallelujah. Verse 20, for the uh, creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, <clears throat> hallelujah, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious freedom, liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption and the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For why does still hope, someone still hope for what he sees? That means they're carnal. They're trusting in the things they see. That means physical. For why does someone still hope in the things he sees? But we hope for what we do not see. And we eagerly wait for it with perseverance or with endurance. Amen? Sufferings of this present time, not worthy to compare to what we shall become in Christ. The fulfillment and redemption. Not putting hope in the temporary, but... <laughs> or earthly. Amen? That means that individuals not able to deny themselves. Not able to deny oneself. It, listen, that's a place where you're constantly denying yourself the right to access these things. Does everybody get it? You are denying yourself the right to access these things of corruption. The right to uh, agree with things that are unclean. You're denying yourself. Does everybody get it? You're saying, no. No way are you going there. No way. Why? Because you have dominion over it. You are a new creation in Christ. You're connected to the eternal realm. And the old man self is still wanting to do its thing, man. It loves this world. It loves unrighteousness. It loves lawlessness. It loves sin. It loves lust. It loves disobedience. And it can never be converted. It must be crucified. Jesus showed us that on the cross. It must be crucified. How is it crucified? By being led by the Spirit. Mark 8. You know, I don't see those stickers on bumpers anymore that used to say, just say no. You know, when, the, uh, the, when they were trying to rescue all kinds of drug addicts and whatever, and said, just say no. Just say no to drugs. Right? You try to tell a drug addict to say no to drugs. Hallelujah. You know, just say no. person will back up and run you over. Just say no. no. Without anointing, you can't say no. Without the power of Christ, you can't say no. And people are still saying yes. <laughs> There's the power of Christ isn't there. They might have had the power to say yes, but now they don't anymore. Does somebody understand? Yes to Christ. And no to the dope. No to the lust. No to the desires. Something broke. There's been a breach made. Something that was open door, touching unclean thing with thought, whatever it is. Remember, the enemy is trying to get us in a frustrated, intensified, emotional, self-absorbent position. Why? So we miss God. Then we miss the escape. Mark 8, 31. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, what a battle is going on, man. 
Mark 8, 31. Let's speak it together. Now Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be what? Rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. Now this is wild because he just told them. He said, listen, I'm going to suffer. I'm going to be rejected. And then they're going to attempt to kill me. Now, most human carnal individual would say, ah! They'd be on the phone or texting, I'm going to be rejected. Some I'm telling you, I've never seen so many people can move those two thumbs and then talk to you at the same time. Hi, yes, yeah, what you're doing? I'm like, what the snap? They're programmed. What? Who are you talking to? I'm talking to you. No, man, you're texting somebody. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, I yeah, know. That's beyond multitask. I don't know if it's demonic or not, you know. It could even be witchcraft, you know. But I don't think it's anointed. Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. <laughs> So Jesus is telling them these things. In verse 32, he spoke this word openly. Now Peter, who was carnal at the time, took him aside and began to rebuke God Almighty. But when he had turned around and he looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter saying, get behind me, Satan. Ooh, you little flesh creature. You little devil, you. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of what? Men. Self. Self. Peter was moved emotionally, but he thought he was moving on compassion. Boy, he was going to protect God. From what? Fulfilling the mission. Now remember, Jesus just released to them, I'm going to be rejected. Amen. I'm going to suffer. And I'm going to get killed. Man, they freaked out. Wait a minute. They forgot that he was not only God, but the Son of God, and came to fulfill a mission. They lost all sight. Why? They got frustrated. That they had angry. No, Lord, this can't happen to you. They probably talked among themselves. You really think so? You think this is going to happen? No, man, we can't let them. Okay, Peter, you talk for us. He might have rebuked Peter, but he was probably rebuking everybody there because they were all flesh heads. Hallelujah. Verse 34. And when he had called the people to himself and his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Why? He just exposed everybody as being self. And take up the cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save him. For what will profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, hello, ashamed of me and my words, ashamed of me and my Bible. Whoever is ashamed of me and my words that are recorded in this book, in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Again, Jesus expressed suffer, rejected by many, then killed. He wasn't asking for pity. He wasn't Facebooking it. Amen. He didn't cry out for help. He didn't run to drugs or alcohol. He didn't run to the world or worldly false fulfillments. But he stayed focused on the call, purpose, and destiny which many forsake. Those that de desire to come after Jesus or follow must reject themselves. And all carnal desires, lust of eyes, not just the eyesight, but all the eye syndrome. Me, myself, and I. Flesh and pride. We must deny why it's got to be a good day. 
to die. It's a good moment to die, not just a good day. Listen, you're going to be, all kinds of things are going to be coming more, more and more to you. You've got to put yourself in that position where you have an attitude of, you know what? I don't care. It's a good day to die. I will not react. I will respond according to what this guy, what this word says. Why? Because when I do that, all heaven is backing me. And when I don't do that, all hell is coming against me. Hallelujah. First Peter 4. Trying times. What? Well, trying to get you out of position. Trying to get you to bite the bait of Satan. And look at everybody. <laughs> there isn't one person that can't blow it. It only takes one inch, one speck of compromise to begin to drift. The word says, when I'm weak, then I'm what? Strong. You see, when people get weak, they begin to look at themselves in that area. Man, I'm so weak. I'm this and this and that. And the devil just brings more. He puts a whole novel out there and says, say this, say this, say this. I'm, here. I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. And then they run to the world and spew everything they got from the enemy and everyone else. Instead of going to the, phone, the throne and not the phone. Amen? See, your words are the same as Texan too, so I want you to know that. Why? It's an intent. What you text is accounted as words. Verse 12, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Glory. Let's, let's speak it, okay? In regard to these things, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same. Am I not there? 1 Peter 4.12. You're right. I'm not there. Let's try 12. Beloved, do not think it's strange concerning that fiery trial and attack from the enemy, which is to try you, test you, and promote you or demote you. Mm. as though some strange thing has happened to you. <laughs> Did you ever wonder why it's only you? It isn't. It's only me. Why does this only happen to me? It doesn't only happen to you. I can't believe this happened to me again. I mean, everybody falls into that place. Lord, why did you allow this to happen? I didn't, he says. You were so frustrated, you missed my voice to escape. I was trying to tell you it was coming. You know, I feed squirrels every morning. <laughs> so when I'm driving, I'm very sensitive to where they are. Because I've gone down the street a few blocks over and there's a squirrel smushed with a nut in its mouth. Oh man, he just got fed and got killed. So I want to make sure I'm not the one running him over. Can you imagine a dead squirrel with a nut in its mouth? <laughs> That's one of my squirrels. I'm a squirrel keeper. I don't know why. I just, just to be sensitive out there, you know, we got to be sensitive about things. In the area, not emotionally sensitive, but alert sensitive. Amen? Did it get hot in here? <laughs> Let's go a little further. Beloved, <laughs> verse 14. Did we go to 13 yet? Okay. 13. Let's start at 12 again. Beloved, do not think it's strange. 
Hallelujah. Beloved, do not think it's strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though you some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice in the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings. That when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the spirit of glory and, the, and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he's glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busy body in all of everybody else's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin in the house of God. And that's where we're at. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. Now listen, there's a lot of people that think they're suffering for God when they're really not. They're suffering over their own selves. Amen? Partakers of Christ's sufferings, not partakers of sufferings of selfish flesh. 2 Corinthians 4. Oh, happy days. It's a good day to die, though. And when that officer pulls you over, if you're breaking the law, do not tell him it's a good day to die. Amen? Because you'll be telling yourself that, man, I should have died. <laughs> I should have died to that. But I couldn't release it. Man. I couldn't hold it back. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4, 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, everyone say light affliction. Anything you're going through, it's a light affliction. Don't exaggerate it and make it worse than what it is. Amen? That's when the enemy shows up. He puts wood on the fire, then adds gasoline. If you let him. They're light afflictions. Why? Because you're dead. And I've never seen a dead person react. Amen? In fact, you can't even get him to smile. In this, we've got to come to a place where it's no longer we that live, but him that lives. Amen? For our light affliction, everyone say light affliction. Turn to your neighbor and say, your afflictions are light, so stop it. Hallelujah. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, everyone say it's only a moment. It's an emotional moment. That will not overtake me. I will t overtake it. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. It's working for us. How is it working for us? It's training you. While we do not look at the things which are seen, here we go again, but at the things which are not seen. That means seeing through the natural into the spirit. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. People are still looking at the temporary self and not the eternal. And that's what gets people in trouble because they haven't died to themselves yet. It's a good day to die, though, isn't it? Luke 9. <laughs>
Aren't you glad we're not religious? Hallelujah. Hey, man, we're supposed to gather together and have fun. This is not a Bible study. It's a training session. Luke 9, 23. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Anybody there? Let's begin. Then he said to them all, say all. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. When? Daily. See, people have a tendency to do it when they feel like it. Daily. It's momently. <laughs> and then you can follow. Amen? Whoever desires to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will what? Save it. Die when? Daily. Die at certain moments. Amen? Again, denying yourself is a process of dying to yourself. So it's a good day to die. So you've got to have control over your desires. And your desires are emotions. Galatians 2. Galatians chapter 2. Verse 19. You know, we have a teaching called um, Stop Justifying and Start Recognizing. Amen? Now, people recognize, but the problem is, is they go back to justify. Instead of cutting the serpent's head off, they justify Listen, you can't pet evil. It will bite you. Don't wait till it gets worse. Take care of it right then and there. Verse 19. For, is everybody there? Where are we at? Galatians 2.19, let's speak it. For I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Who loved me and gave himself for me. See, he was able to receive God's love. So many people have a hard time receiving God's love. Of course, they have a hard time giving God's love. Again, verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. Until we get to that place where we are, and how do you get crucified by Christ? You are led by the Spirit. Amen? When you are led by the Spirit, you are crucified. Then it's no longer you that live, but him that lives. And the life that you live now is for him, not for yourself. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. No longer I that live, but him that live. In ver Psalm 37. What we're doing is reaching master's levels. We're re going towards the master's level to where we master these things. Now, don't get me wrong. Mastering something doesn't mean you have victory over it all the time. Amen? Mastering is recognizing and then doing something about it. It doesn't mean you won't be attacked and things won't happen. You're, we are learning to master things. Some things we need to depart from and some things we need to take dominion for over and some things we need to turn over to God. Amen? So mastering something is determining what the circumstances and what you're hearing from God and what you're to do. But if you're all caught up in yourself and your emotions, you're not going to hear what God's telling you to do. You may be trying to remove a spirit when God didn't tell you to. He told you to hand it over to him. Does everybody understand? So when you don't know what to do, you do what? 
you wait. You wait to hear God. Now, not, now again, you're not going to step out in the middle of the street and say, I better hear from God. You know, No, you get the heck out of the way. Amen? Or you're going to have tire tracks on you. But in this, we, we, there, are, there are things that are automatically understood by the Spirit of God, by the life of Christ, and by the Word of God that's in us. So there are certain things that we know what to do right then and there. And then there are certain things that we've got to hear God and what to do. Amen? And I'm telling you, when you hear Him and He's releasing it to you, you will have victory every time. There's no failure in the voice of God. None. Hallelujah. Psalm 37. Is everybody there? Verse 1. 37, 1. Let's speak it together. Do not what? Do not fret. So when you fret, is that a response or a react? React. Do not fret because the person doesn't have a mask on. Hallelujah. Boy, they freak out, man. Those religious spirits, they freak out without a mask. Oh, my God. Do not fret because of evildoers. Do not be what? Envious. Is that react or respond? React. Of workers in iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do what? Do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. See, sometimes things aren't happening your way because there really isn't a delight in the Lord. There's a delight in everything else he gives you. There's a delight in the blessings, but there's not that full delight in him. He says, commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. Hello, rest. That means Wait, and wait patiently, endure for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from what? Anger. Man, if you're an angry individual, you ain't going to hear God at all. And forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes what? Harm. Don't react, but respond. Trust, dwell, delight in him. Not chase goosebumps and all the other things, and look for false other fulfillments. Why? The Word already told us. Do not chase after other gods. People put God as a God for fulfillment instead of the true God. In other words, then people are putting things in their lives that are idols that become their gods. They're fulfilled. You know, you're driving to church on Sunday morning. How many people are out there washing their car with a mask on? I mean, they're huffing and puffing. They're walking with a mask on. It's like, jeez. Now we're finding people are getting sick and disease in their lungs because they're wearing a mask so much. But that's the plan of the enemy. Isolation is a plan of the enemy. He's trying to bring division. He doesn't want people gathering together. Why? We gather together. He's in danger. Amen? Praise God. What happens then is uh, the more that we respond, it gives God the opportunity to release the promises. Why? Because you sow to the flesh, you reap corruption. You sow to the spirit, you reap what? Life. God desires a release. But the word says after you are obedient, then the promise is released. Now what's that word in ob Obedience. Die. Yeah. Psalm 119. Let me share this with you. When he releases a promise when you delight in your death. Psalm 119, 65. The Bible says that the Lord delights in the death of his children. And he also delights in the prosperity of them. Amen? Psalm 
Psalm 119 and verse 65. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Now, wait a minute. So he's dealing with his people according to his words. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went, what? Astray. But now I keep your what? Word. So he was afflicted because he wasn't relying on the word. He wasn't using the words of God. He was using the words of flesh. Caused him to go astray and became afflicted. In other words, when a person becomes afflicted, they walk from underneath the covering. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. Oh, I turned everything around. You are good and do not, and, and do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in your law or in your word. It is good for me that I would have been afflicted. I realized that I wasn't decreeing your word. I was decreeing my own flesh. It was good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes or your words. The law of your mouth is better to me than the thousands of coins of gold and silver. Anything that is not responded by his word is reacted by the flesh and reaps corruption. That's where you and I must die daily. It's a good day. It's a good moment. It's a good decision to die. To die to what? Yourself. So that you are not reacting. You are responding. Amen? Matthew 18. Hallelujah. Matthew 18, verse 15. You know, so listen, one of the things the enemy likes to do is set up people to get offended, rejected, or whatever. When that comes, you must hold yourself. In fact, you must choke, react. Lift it off the ground, let his feet kick in the air. Choke it until you are able to respond. Amen? Do not listen to the voice of react. Just choke it, you know. Hold it in the air. Okay, I'm going to, because you want to react. You want to react so bad. And you even believe that the other person deserves that react. Oh, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. I'm going to, I'm going to, I, 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 I. Now you know it's really flesh. You hold and choke, react. Until it stops. If it doesn't, poof, and then you respond. Amen? Then you respond. Just slam his head against a wall or something. Praise God. Is everybody okay? Verse 15. Can you see that little react dude kicking his legs in the air? Yes! You little varmint, you. Verse 15, moreover, if your brother sins against you, offends you, does something that really upsets you, go and tell him his fault between you and him. Not flesh book. Hello. Not your pastor. You do not bring it to the office. Don't call me because I don't care. Grow up and take care of it. You, gotta, you must follow the word or you're going to react and reap. Somebody got it? If you're not following this, you're going to reap. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault or her fault or their fault between you and him or her alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. You know, so many people are reacting 
when it's something, something stupid. Why don't you just go talk to them? Find out what's what. Work it out. No way. I'd rather text him. This is how I feel about you. Oh, that's nice. It says go to them, not text them, and not call them. Go to them. It's called face to face. This is Facebook. Hello. Spiritual Facebook. <laughs> Verse 16. But if he or them or whatever will not hear, take with you a baseball bat. No. <laughs> but if he will not hear, take with you one or two more. Yeah, but <laughs> Only kidding. I know you want to react like that, though. They just won't listen. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more individuals that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be what? Established. And if he refuses to hear them, then tell it to the church. Not until then or you're out of order and you are reacting and you are going to reap. Does everybody get it? Again, the word of God. You must follow the word of God. If you are not following the word of God, you are reacting and not responding. Does everybody go, okay, okay. Praise God. And if he refuses to hear, then you tell it to the church. And if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Hello. But first you must do your part. Amen? So here it is again. It's a good time to die. Amen? It's a good day to die. Why? Because you must die to yourself so you do not react. <laughs> Sometimes you got to hold two of them. You know? Man, okay, praise God. First Peter chapter 4. First Peter 4. Hallelujah. In verse 1. Glory to God. Is everybody there? Let's grow for it. Therefore, since Christ suffered for who? Us. In the flesh, arm yourself with the same what? Mind, the same way of thinking. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Arm yourself. Be prepared. Why? Listen. The enemy's going to try to get you when you least expect it. He lurks, he waits. Next thing, all of a sudden, poof. What happened? What, what's this? He wants you to react. Do not react. Respond. Whew. Just grab that thing. Don't grab the person. Just grab that spirit. Grab your flesh. Amen? You have to do it yourself. Go ahead and do it. You know, whatever you got to do. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself. Be prepared. Arm yourself with the same way of thinking. For he who suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the loss of self, men, but for the what? Will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime doing stupid things and doing the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, drugs, and all the other stuff, abominable idolatries, pornography, and all the other foolish stuff. And regarding these things, they think it's strange that you do not do those things anymore in the same flood of dispensation, but speaking evil of you. Oh. 
They will give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead. Dead. Now, there's multiple meanings of this. It doesn't mean dead to self. Amen? It means they're walking dead because they're living a life of sin. That they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be what? Serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Love will cover them all. To be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister to it to one another. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Romans 8.31. And then one more scripture. Then you can go home and have your popcorn. Hallelujah. Unless you're dying to yourself tonight, then you can, <laughs> you can test yourself. Those things that you desire that you know you really want, die. Die. I'm going to die to that before I kill somebody. Romans 8.31. You know, when people are sick, they get grumpy. You know what I'm saying? They don't feel good. They're like, eh. They have a tendency to react instead of respond. Stay away. <laughs> Depart from these individuals. You know? Be careful. And don't get sucked into their atmosphere. Does everybody get it? Don't get sucked into that atmosphere. When somebody's angry, frustrated, whatever, the enemy's trying to get you to get sucked into that atmosphere. You know, there's a lot of people that have been home with plagued with the flu and whatever and Corona, Budweiser, and all the other stuff. Don't get sucked up into that. Amen? Don't get, don't get sucked up into the, in the argument with the, the plague thing, the, the mask. Amen? Because there's sometimes you want to react. Oh, there's a lot of times you want to react. Verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us. Praise God. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are what? More than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In other words, his love for me and you is unconditional. It's amazing how when we do things and we know we it wasn't right or made a mistake or whatever it is, and how immediately the enemy comes and says, God doesn't love you. Well, that's a stinking lie. Amen? He doesn't love you. How could he love someone that just did all of these things? He even loves the murderers after they repent, okay? But he's looking for, he, he desires no one to be lost, no matter what it is. And the love of God will penetrate a person's heart and turn them. Let me tell you, you start loving on some people, you're going to find them melting. 
1 Corinthians 15, and we'll close here. First Corinthians 15. In verse 33. Do not be what? Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Well, that means you better be aware of what you're associating with. Listen, there's evil company that comes in a spirit form. Does everybody get that? You may, have a, you may be associated in fellowshipping with some spirits that are persecuting you, that are irritating you, trying to cause you to what? React that are condemning you, whatever it may be. Their whole purpose is to stir you up so you can't hear God. Amen? We must be aware of those things. The love of God for me and you is unconditional. No matter what you've done, His love for you will never stop. It's we who breach the love towards Him because we're listening to the voice of the stranger. Amen? Hallelujah. So we see here that evil company corrupts good habits. Verse 34. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But someone will say, how are the dead raised and with what body do they come? Foolish one, what you sow is not made alive unless it what? Unless it what? Dies. And what you sow, you do not sow that body that it shall be, but mere grain, perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he pleases, and to each one seed its own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of an animal, and another one of fish, and another one of birds. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it's raised in power. It is sown in natural body. It is raised spiritual body. There is natural body and there is spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. And the last man became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first but the natural and afterward the spirit. The first man was of the earth made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And we have borne the image of the man of dust. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall all not sleep, but we shall all be what? Changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal put on immortality. So when this corrupt, corruptible has put on incorruption, the, this mortal put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord as long as you stay dead. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let this word...
be imparted in each and every one of us that we will enjoy the day of death and deny ourselves in every area that would promote a react and choke react so we can release, respond for your glory, for your honor, and for your praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.